Developing software is risky and expensive. Software is formless and, for most people, hard to understand. Subtle interactions in software can affect seemingly unrelated components. A good development process focuses on mitigating risks and finding problems early before they can become showstoppers. And while there's still something that we can do about them. Here are seven strategies to mitigate risks in software development. Number one, integrate continuously. Creating a system that can be built from day one and continuously integrating software into that system as it's being built is really the only way to eliminate risk in my view. Delaying integration until one of the last steps before release is a bad idea because integration is the time when we see how our code behaves with other parts of the system. It's often when the nastiest bugs are found. A feature remains unproven and carries an unknown amount of risk until it's integrated into the system. Integrating features into releases that are tested in large batches is like going all in in Las Vegas. The odds are against you. So don't do it. Number two, avoid branching. When we branch in a version control system by features or by teams or whatever, and then integrate those branches just before releasing, we're essentially doing waterfall. Continuous integration means to integrate continuously. It's not to put off integration until the end. That's waterfall. Agile is about burning down risk. And that can only happen when code is integrated as it's being built. Once code is integrated into the system, the risk drops to near zero. But when components are built in branches and integrated before release, the risk is unknown. It's unknown until the branches are integrated. Instead of branching, use feature flags to turn off features in the system while they're being built, but not yet ready to be activated. Number three. Invest in automated tests. Removing all human intervention from validating a release candidate so tests are entirely automated is essential for dropping the cost of development. Fast automated tests let you run them anytime and provide important feedback. If you find it difficult to do test automation in your system, then consider a redesign to something more testable. A lack of testability often indicates a poor design. Number four, identify areas of risk. Risk often has to do with unknowns or things outside of our direct control. Identify what these things are by asking what could go wrong. Identify external dependencies, things that are out of our direct control, and then look for ways to mitigate those risks and decouple those dependencies. Number five, spike on unknowns. Once an unknown is identified, you can work on it for a short period and then check in to measure your progress. This is a spike, and spikes are generally focused around a question or a series of questions that you want to get answered. By creating a little mini time box with check-ins and measuring progress, we hope to avoid going down rat holes or wasting our time. Try to keep separating the known from the unknown so that the unknown becomes smaller and smaller. Number six, build the smallest pieces that show value. The whole premise of Agile is to build in small batches. Smaller problems are easier to understand, easier to solve, easier to prove, easier to maintain. But how small should you make your problems? How small should you build? My general rule is to build the smallest thing that still shows some value. If 80% of the value comes from 20% of the feature, then build that first 20%. We might not even need the other 80%. Finally, number seven, validate often. Our customers may not know exactly what they want until they see it. Getting validation early and often can help us build a higher value product and engage the customer in finding better ways of doing things. When development can become a partnership, between the customer or product owner and the development team, then we can often build better features than we could have with all the upfront planning in the world. Reducing risk in software is about assuring that you're building the right things 
and assuring that you're building the things right. We know we're building the right things by getting feedback from our users early and often. We know we're building the things right by following good engineering practices for building changeable code that continuously integrates into our build server. By doing these two things, we can significantly improve the likelihood and degree of our success. Until next time, happy coding.